always have a soft spot for Sir Michael Caine. You have? Well, you gave him acting tips, didn't you? <laughs> I'm here with Jeff Shreves, otherwise known as Shreevesy, most often seen coming out of a tunnel on a football pitch. Jeff, now, Def Leppard rang you out of the blue and asked where they could watch the FA Cup semi-final in Canada. Yeah. You couldn't conjure anywhere up, but if you could perform any miracle, what miracle would it be? Ooh, good question. Yeah, they were on tour at the time and half the band supported Sheffield Wednesday and the other half supported Sheffield United, so they're desperate to watch it, but we couldn't get a feed to them in time. Any miracle. I'd love to have the musical ability of any member of Def Leppard, in fact, any professional musician. I play the piano extremely badly. <laughs> if I could somehow morph overnight into Jules Holland, yeah, that'd be marvellous. Well, if you heard me play, you'd say that would be a miracle. <laughs> and would you do a stint on Jules Holland on New Year's Eve? 100%. If I could play the piano, you wouldn't be able to stop me. I'd not stop showing off. You started out as an estate agent. Correct. If you could sell any building in the world, which one would it be and who would you sell it to? Sell a state at home to the NSPCC for virtually nothing. But to have the most magical, fabulous home for the children. Because let's, let's be honest, a lot of people through no fault of their own get a really rotten start in life. Yeah. Jerry Hall once opened the door to you in her dressing gown. If you could open the door to anyone in your dressing gown, who would it be? Hang on, I think Samantha, I need to clarify that Jerry Hall, I was holding her 10 year old son James and I was delivering him back to her, having been at England against Argentina in the World Cup. And With Mick Jagger? Yes. I don't like to name her. No, that's right, I'll do it for you. <laughs> Um, He'd personally requested that you sit opposite him over dinner so that he, he could discuss football. football. He, yeah. he was really good. He really knew his football as well. He really knew the tactics, positions, stuff like that. Yeah, he was, um, he was great fun. So let's put that in perspective. Jerry Hall didn't just come to the door in her dressing gown. because It was about four o'clock in the morning. We just, we just arrived by PJ. Who would I like to open my door to in my dressing gown? Well, it has to be a total stranger because anybody I know I'll be too embarrassed to see you again <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> I, I do like a dressing gown as well. Uh, yeah, I would love the thought of seeing Sir Michael Caine again. When I interviewed him, it was 1998. I thought of him coming kind of saying, hello, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> that just, was pretty good, actually. <laughs> just come to see how you are. Yeah, Sir Michael Caine. Sir Michael Caine. And y you got him to say, what was it you were getting him to say? And you were like, do it again, Michael. Yeah, that Bit was more welly. <laughs> Yeah, he was doing a message to Glenn Hoddle and the England team because they had gone to Italy. It was my idea to get him to reprise the whole Italian job thing. Yeah. And I said to him, right, just do a piece to camera like this. And I got him to say, listen, Glenn, I tried to pull off the Italian job. I didn't quite make it. Good luck to you and the boys. So he's done that for me. And he said, how's that? I said, just do it once more. Really give it some... I, and I stopped myself, I said, hang on, am I telling Sir Michael Caine how to act? Uh, it was so cringe. He said, yes, you are, son, but it's enthusiasm and I like it. Oh, my God. For, for me, he, he absolutely, I mean, I was really privileged in my career to have met a lot of famous people, but he absolutely proved the old adage, the bigger the star, the nicer they are. He wasn't looking to impress anybody or act the big this or that. He was fantastic. Fantastic. Football is known for its chance, its inventive chance. Yeah. If you could invent a football chant to sum up your life, what would it be? I definitely, you fat bastard, would, <laughs> would have been chanced at me a lot. I definitely think I'd get, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> and I'd probably get as well the referees one, which is, you don't know what you're doing. You oh don't know what you're doing. Oh God. With a chant though, you've got to earn the right. You've got to earn the right to a chant. Oh really? Yeah. So you'd have to have done something spectacular on the pitch. So it's almost prestigious. Oh yeah, if it's complimentary. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Declan Rice now at the moment the whole time it's just rice, rice, bait, rice, rice, bait. Brilliant. When you were filming Sky's football show at home during the pandemic, yeah. they sent you all the paraphernalia that you'd need, including lights and makeup. Mm -hmm. What's your makeup must have and have you used it outside filming? 
anti-shine. A little bit of foundation, because I'm so fair skinned, yeah. under lights, I can look quite red. Or as my family members quite often point to me, you're as red as a fox's ass. <laughs> it's an East End expression, <laughs> family, family roots. You haven't been tempted to use your makeup kit on a night out? No. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think there's enough makeup that's going to improve this, so. We've been on a Sky Christmas party and Gary Neville and I were the last men standing. Alcohol may well have been involved and I fell down a set of steps going to a Chinese restaurant in oh Chinatown in London. Goodness. And the next morning I had to be up early to go and do an interview with Patrice Everett at Manchester United. And I had a great big cut and a scut down here. It was horrendous. Put makeup on it. When I got to the Manchester United, the press officer at the time, she said, look, I'll, I'll give you some makeup to put on that. That looks horrendous. And I put the makeup on it. Didn't do the job. So they so thought Vinnie Jones had been <laughs> at you. So we turn up. I said, right, we'll shoot this as like a head to head like this. Yeah. And I put that side away from the camera. So make, even makeup wouldn't have saved me that day. You have described Alan Shearer's testicles as elephantine. Is that how you pronounce elephantine? Elephantine? I don't elephantine. know. Hang on, perspective. <laughs> perspective here, right. Here. <laughs> he was working for Sky in South Africa. And two days beforehand, he'd been in an incident in a match with Newcastle against Chelsea where Robert Hoof, the Chelsea sent half, and he stepped right in his groin. Without any prompting, he showed me them. Basically, they were swollen. So any any other footballer I would yeah, yeah. describe as like an animal. Yeah. Thierry Henry, he was like a cheetah. He was so fast. His pace was extraordinary. His famous video against Liverpool, he knocks the ball not past one, but two Liverpool players, they've got a five and ten yard head start on him. Powers past them. You can't defend against pace. It was astonishingly quick. When you're touchline, as a match day reporter, you see that happen, you're like, wow. Did that just happen? He, that was, he was rapid. Oh, he was rapid. Catch pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Jeff.